Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, then welcome. My name is Christina, and on my channel, I share my own experiences with all things beauty. So if you're looking for the best and most honest how-tos and reviews from a consumer's perspective, then make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, as well as leave any comments that you have for me down below. In this video, we are going to be doing a first impressions review and wear test of the new e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. This recently came out in December, I believe it was, and I have the shade Light 280N, which I am going to talk about the shade range and all of that. So if you guys are interested to see my entire review of the CC Cream, then just keep on watching. So to give you guys a little bit of background on the CC Cream, so they have 20 shades and they break it down in undertones. They have cool, neutral, and warm. And for me specifically, I felt like the swatches on the uh, e.l.f. website tended to be a little darker. So what I mean by that is I am usually in the medium shade range and I am neutral undertoned, but for some reason I felt like the light shade kind of worked better from what I saw on the website. It could be super light like in person once I apply it, so that would suck. We will see if this one works out for me. This is supposed to have a medium to full coverage as well as a natural finish, so we will see. It starts at medium, so I hydrated my skin with the new e.l.f. Actually, I don't think it's new, but new to me, I bought the e.l.f. Halo Hydration Cream. I think that's what it's called. So I applied that and it does have SPF 30, but you guys know that I wear a separate sunscreen because I don't think that sunscreen in like makeup products is enough. It's nice to have, but not necessarily enough for me. It does claim to have ingredients that benefit the skin, such as collagen, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, as well as peptides. However, I was looking at the ingredients list and I am not a super informed uh, skincare specialist, I guess. So when I was looking at the ingredients list, I was just looking at it black and white, and I saw that a lot of these ingredients that are supposed to benefit the skin are pretty low down in the ingredient list. Now I know that it only has to have about 1% of the ingredient to be able to be on the top of the list. I could be completely wrong. If anyone knows any more information about this, please let me know. I would love if this had skincare ingredients that made a difference, but I, again, like SPF, think that these are ingredients that need to be separate from the foundation or the CC cream. It's nice to have, and it's better than having really terrible ingredients for the skin. However, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference in your skin alone. You get about one fluid ounce in this, it's $14, and I personally think that that's kind of expensive for e.l.f.'s price point. Now, this could be a life-changing CC cream. We will see if it is, and $14, it is is cheaper than high-end, but it's still a higher price point than e.l.f. usually gives us. So along with the CC cream, I did buy the duo brush that was advertised with it. It's supposed to be a complexion duo brush, and it's very similar in look, aesthetic, to the IT Cosmetics duo brush. I don't know if it's the exact same. I can tell you right off the bat that the concealer side does feel about the same, but the foundation portion of it does feel a little less dense. That's not a bad thing. Um, I think that it still feels really nice and I'm excited to try it with the CC cream because I love the IT Cosmetics brush. Along with using the CC cream and the brush, I am gonna be using a ton of e.l.f. products. I'm gonna try to keep it mainly e.l.f. or at least, you know, inexpensive products that you guys can use as well or might already have. So let's go ahead and start applying the CC cream. All right, so I have these cute little clips that everyone has. <laughs> I bought them on Amazon like a while ago and I haven't used them yet. So I figured I would use them today. I'll link them in the description too if you guys are interested at all. So like I said, I got the shade Light 280N, which is neutral and I'm not usually light. So we'll see if this works out. I just felt like it looked like online that this would match me better, but this is the shade right here. See, it it is very warm toned in my opinion. And I'm not using any primer because the only e.l.f. primer that I have is the jelly primer and I feel like that's a very gripping one but at the same time it's not really hydrating and because I'm a little worried that this is going to be drying on my dry skin I'm going to go ahead and start to blend this out Ugh. 
Okay, this shade actually looks like it's going to do pretty well. I am as pale as I usually get throughout the year right now, so if you're about the same shade as me, you might consider going a little lighter than you normally would. That's really nice. And I do plan on just using the brush throughout my entire face and then going in with my sponge to blend out any streaks or anything that were created with the brush. All right, guys, it's looking really good. I think I have a pretty decent medium coverage right now because you can still see my freckling right on my cheek, which is totally normal before I put any concealers on. I'll show you guys an up close of my skin right now compared to nothing on the other side. I think it looks really good and the shade match is very nice. And I am applying it with my fingers because swiping it on, at least swiping it on, I feel like warms it on the skin and I'm not using, well actually that was a lot. I was about to say I'm not using it in a product, but I think I may have used a lot. I haven't used one pump on either side, so you could probably do one pump on your whole face. It does feel like I'm wearing a cream or a foundation on my skin, so it's not like undetectable, but it doesn't feel heavy or anything. Blending it out is super easy, and I don't feel like any of the product is disappearing anywhere. Now, it could be different with a sponge. That's always very different application from a brush but with this brush i like it i do recommend this brush i think it's completely gotten rid of the redness in my skin it's very even now and the finish does look pretty natural i feel like i still see a good sheen on my skin it could be sweat <laughs> but so far it looks really good i think that this skin looks like a good even canvas honestly i would probably leave it here because I haven't really been using like full coverage foundation on an everyday basis. For the sake of this review, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more to see how much coverage I can get out of it. Mainly going to concentrate it on my cheeks because that's where I need the most coverage. And again, I'll give you guys a quick close up before I apply any more of the CC cream. So the consistency of this product, it kind of feels moussey at first. And then you blend it out and it doesn't leave like a sticky thick residue. I'm just blending it with my finger to see how it does. And then I'm going to finish blending with my brush. Now I'm going to take my sponge and just lightly pat it so I can get any excess product off and also get rid of any streaks that may have formed while I was putting it on with that brush. But so far, the finish is really lovely. I like the natural finish. It does still give my skin a good sheen, so it doesn't matte it out or make it look dry or anything. I always enjoy CC creams, and this one in particular will give you more coverage than, you know, your average CC cream. A lot of people are comparing this to the IT Cosmetics CC cream. I really love that one as well. I do find that the IT Cosmetics one is more hydrating, so you definitely have to set your face. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish with my concealer and all of my cream products and stuff, and then we will see if I have to set my face afterwards. And I am going in with my medium beige camo concealer, the hydrating version, and you can tell because the cap is white. I'm sure that these two products are gonna do lovely together. Okay, wow, my skin is looking so good. This base, is so even and obviously the concealer did really well with that CC cream. I think it's blending really nicely. So for my blush, I'm gonna be using the e.l.f. Putty blush. I have actually, I bought the entire collection of the e.l.f. Putty blushes because I was meaning to do swatches on them and I never did. I'm trying to decide between, what is this one, Tahiti, is the more pink one. We have Turks and Caicos, which is more of a peach, and then we have Fiji, which is uh, like an orange red almost. I think for today I'm gonna go for Fiji, and I also have this e.l.f. brush. It's a precision airbrush stipple. They actually gave this to me as a free gift with my purchase, which is so cool because I love e.l.f. brushes. I can't get over how nice my base looks. I really like the finish of it because my skin looks healthy. Granted, up here is probably because of the concealer, but on my forehead and like down here, 
I think that's the CC cream. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and see how it does with the brush. It's a little more pink on the skin. I've noticed with these blushes that you definitely have to build it up if you want to get good coverage. Like if you want it to stand out more, you got to do a couple of layers. Look at that. That's really pretty. I'm digging that. Oh, I forgot to put my lip balm on. I have the Elf Rider Dye Lip Balm in the Pumpkin Spice. I'm gonna put that on. It's a very thick lip balm. So if you like more of a creamy, oily lip balm, this might not be the one for you, but it kind of pulls on the lips. It's okay, it's not my favorite. All right, that's the extent of the liquid and creams that I'm gonna be putting on my face today. So I'm gonna go ahead and set under the eyes because this will crease if I don't set it. And I have this e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. I've used it in a previous video. If you haven't seen my full face of e.l.f. video, I did feature this in there. Really love this powder. I believe I got it in the shade medium, just a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna set under my eyes. All right, that's how it's looking. I am kind of like touching my face and I do feel a little bit of stickiness. Like it's not a lot at all, honestly. If you have super dry skin and you don't normally set your face or you want products where you don't have to set your face, I don't think you would necessarily have to set your face. But for me today, I'm gonna go ahead and set. Before I finish off the rest of my makeup, I wanna show you guys another close up of my skin once it's been set with some powder. I feel like I could have left it unpowdered. I do have a shoot to go to today though, so I wanna make sure that my face is set with powder before I put a mask on, so that's kind of the reason why I decided to do that today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back to show you guys how the CC cream is laying on my skin. All right, so I am done with my makeup for the day and I do have a couple of thoughts. So as I was doing the rest of my face, it was looking pretty good, I mean, the shade is a little darker like than my neck, but it, it's just the shade. I haven't seen it oxidize or anything. It's looking pretty true to color. However, when I went to go wipe off the lip balm, I did wipe off a little bit of the CC cream around my outer lips. So I was like, okay, let me just fix that. So I took the same duo brush that we used earlier and I kind of swiped over. Now, like you guys saw, I did set my face with a powder. So this could have just been my bad, but it started to kind of like break up over here. And then I noticed like down here, it was starting to break up. So I kind of patted it with the brush and then I was like, okay, it's breaking it up even more. So I took my sponge and I tried to pat it, which in general, does not usually work if I've already powdered my face. So <laughs> if you powder your face and you have dry skin, don't powder the dry spots. I am using a prescription grade formula for like my hyperpigmentation. I talked about that in my last video. So if you guys wanna know what I'm talking about, it's in there. But basically I have been getting some dry spots, which is totally normal because I do have some tretinoin that I'm using. And I've been having to use creams on my dry areas. So this CC cream did kind of stick to that because I set my face. I can't necessarily tell you if it was sticking before that I'll look back at the footage and see but I didn't notice anything up until like the very end when I was finishing up my makeup I'll give you guys a quick close-up again so you can see what I'm talking about that dry area and you can probably see it in the footage but it's right around here and then the CC cream did break up a bit. I am almost positive that it's because I powdered my face. I did go in with some MAC Fix Plus to just spray the face down and give it a little bit more moisture again. It did seem to help the issue and I have a feeling that throughout the day my skin is going to kind of build a little bit more oils, so I'll let you know what that's looking like. I will do a couple of check-ins throughout the day and I'll let you guys know how it's looking and my thoughts on it. So all in all, for the first impression, I do really like it. I did really like the natural finish. When I wear this again, I don't think I'm gonna powder anywhere other than under my eyes, and I'll see how that does. And I do really enjoy CC creams that have good coverage because I find that they just look more natural on my skin. If you guys wanna see how it wears throughout the day, then just keep on watching. All right guys, I just got done with my shoot, so I wanted to show you how my skin's looking. Look at the finish of this. 
I definitely have gained a little bit of oils, which I actually prefer. Um, and it's looking really good. Let me check on this dry spot. It honestly doesn't look that bad. Like you can see that I'm wearing foundation, but it's not super cakey and spotty. I feel like the natural oils definitely did help to combat that dry area. But this is what it's looking like. These glasses are from Target, by the way. I got them like a while back, so I don't know if they still have them, but I like it. I think it's looking very, very good. And it is, what time is it? It's almost five o'clock. So it's about five hours, six hours since I applied this. It doesn't feel greasy or anything. It still feels like it's set down with powder. Like it feels really nice. We're looking at Christmas lights at someone's home that they open up to the public. And it's just insane. Look at this. Yeah, this is their house. You gotta respect their space. You're not going on the grass. Foundation. All right, everyone. I am back from my very last check-in. It is about 11.15 right now. And I honestly don't know how long I've had this CC cream on at this point. I had a photo shoot to do. I hung out with my family, went to see some Christmas lights, as you guys saw in some of the footage. And I just wanted to talk a little bit more about my opinions on it. Well, since I was out for a little bit with my family, I did wear a mask. So for the majority of the time I had my mask on, I'm not seeing any crazy like fading where my mask was, honestly. It looks pretty good. I, I do see like some spots where it's come off. Now we're talking like an 11 hour, 12 hour day. So I am being very like kind about this. From far away, my base looks really good. I think it looks very solid. I'm not seeing anything that's like a huge issue, but this spot where I had that dry spot where it was already flaking does look very splotchy. I have a dry spot right around here that you can kind of see. Um, and then of course, like all of my base products, it has creased and crumbled like right under my nose and that's totally normal but what i'm mostly paying attention to is the dry spots so if you have dry spots please make sure if you're going to use this to moisturize your skin as well as make sure that area looks really good and flawless before you actually set it down with something such as powder. I will show you guys some close-ups and you will see that it is definitely breaking up. From close-up, it's not cute, but looking at where the face looked good from the get-go, the CC cream still looks really nice. To recap everything, I think that the CC cream is really great in general, like all things considered. I think that it applied really nicely on the skin. Immediate finish on it was really nice, very natural looking. I would not recommend powdering this if you don't have oily skin. Like if you have oily skin, you'll probably want a powder where you usually like have oils forming. However, if you are normal to dry, I would say don't bother powdering it. It might just make it look really like crepey like mine did. Do I think it's worth $14? Honestly, not really because for a drugstore product, not just an e.l.f. product, but a drugstore foundation product, that is kind of pushing it. It's pretty expensive. I know that drugstore prices are getting more expensive anyways, but that's definitely on the more expensive side. Like if you wanted to save that money to buy a high-end foundation or CC cream like the It Cosmetics one, I would recommend doing that. Honestly, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys what to do with your money because that's not my place, but personally, with the foundations and CC creams and stuff that I already own, $14, yes, is pretty expensive for a CC cream that did well but didn't blow me away. Again, <laughs> for the 50th time, if you don't suffer with dry spots or anything like that, I would recommend it because e.l.f. is very reputable and if you're looking for like an everyday medium to full coverage foundation, if you're into something like that, then I do think it's a really good product. However, if you're just wanting to try it because it's a new product from e.l.f., mm, it's just okay. 
I'll probably use it again, like I said, and not powder it, and I will update the description so you guys can kind of see my thoughts on that. But yeah, I mean, I'm not regretting getting it. I think it's a really good product. First impressions with products are not always the end all be all. So just keep that in mind. So that is my first impression and my overall review. Like I said, I am gonna try it without a powder and I will update the description for you guys once I do that so you can get my overall thoughts on everything in case you know my first impression wasn't the best impression. That's everything for this video guys. Let me know if this review was helpful for you and if the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream is something that you are thinking about adding to your collection. And if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. And I'll see you guys in my next. Bye!